Bloody hell. Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, <coughs> excuse me one second and we'll begin. Just yep. another tiny bit of tea. Brilliant. Um, so I think we should begin. Um, firstly, I just want to say uh, hello to everyone watching. Um, glad anyone, everyone so could I join us. Uh, and I uh, just wanted to introduce uh, myself firstly. So my name is Antonio Roberts. Um, I'm an artist and curator based in Birmingham in the UK and then curator of the Copy Paste exhibition, which is currently happening on Pixel in Bergen and also online because, of course, many of us are living our lives out online. At the moment. Uh, sad not to be there, but happy that it's still going ahead. And uh, yeah, I just want to welcome you all to uh, what's happening now, one of the events that's part of the exhibition. Um, a presentation from Constant, who is an organization based in Brussels in uh, Belgium, who I've known actually now for, I'm going to say possibly 11 years. Maybe yes. <laughs> I, I don't know, I didn't make the count, but it must be over 10 years, yes. Oh yeah, it's easily over 10. And um, so, um, of course, uh, they may introduce themselves, but I know them more so for yes. their oh, yeah, work within the open source and, um, and free culture so, uh, movement, uh, and um, very big fan of everything that they have in these areas. areas. And they're also um, constant, uh, also part of the co copy-paste exhibition, um, which the works aren't viewable online, but if you want to see them, I've been, there will be a curator's tour of the exhibition, the physical and digital exhibition, uh, being streamed online every Sunday until the exhibition um, end. So here today we have um, the, I'm going to say co-artistic directors or co-directors, uh, Femke and Peter. So here today, we have... oh, no? oh, it's all Femke. My apologies. <laughs> no. I always just assumed like you're a kind of a tag team. Uh, For those following along, if you um, are watching online on the, the Pixel um, Hub, uh, the Mozilla Hub, on the chat there is a link to the presentation that Constant has given. So if you want to follow along in a text version, that's there. And also within the chat, um, Pixel is there on the Twitch channel too. Um, if you have any questions as the presentation is going along, if you paste them in, if you write them into the stream, you can pick those up and they can be in discussion later after the presentation is delivered um, and like i'll be reading myself i'll be reading those um, later so yeah without further ado i'm going to hand over to peter and femke uh, to deliver the presentation take it away mm -hmm. thank you antonio and um hi everybody hello <laughs> and we're very happy to be here and would like to thank you and also maite and the other people in pixel for the invitation we are very happy to be in the Pixel uh, program. And um, what we would like to do is to talk a little bit about uh, licenses um, as a uh, field, a, a possible terrain to uh, write uh, possibilities for artistic practice. So we will talk a little bit about an event that we have organized uh, last year, which was called Authors of the Future. And from there, we will talk a bit more specifically about uh, a few uh, examples um, and specifically about the Cinema Sauvage uh, example, which is a, a festival uh, which is uh, organized in Brussels, uh, a cinema, cinema festival, Brussels, cinema Sauvage, um, and we've been working with them uh, on the issue of licenses. So uh, that, that's where we'll, we, we will be heading festival, to. Um, yeah, so maybe Constant is an association for arts and media. Before you start, mm -hmm. could you just shut? Down the camera for now. Ah, okay. <laughs> we'll shut down the camera. And we'll so be you... still here, but uh, just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you later. So, Constant is an association for arts and media based in Brussels since uh, '97. Um, we're a group of uh, a multidisciplinary group of uh, artists, designers, people in the cultural field. Um, and our work is uh, placed at the intersection of floss, uh, feminism, and uh, the thinking about authorship. Uh, in the past, we've worked a lot on alternatives for um, uh, author rights on, uh, in digital media, because the whole field of digital media has a very specific approach of uh, authorship. Um, for the moment, we are very interested in um, 
thinking in uh, connections to uh, societal development and how uh, artistic practice is uh, intertwined with um, yeah, more political um, aspects of life. Uh, and that's where we also see a potential for the licenses or maybe other types of documents um, yeah, to play a role in. Um, our work is very much uh, based in collective work, so most of the things that we do uh, is uh, aimed at researching artistic practice from the inside out, so from the, the, the perspective of uh, people who are actually uh, creating uh, culture, um, but not shutting their eyes for uh, possible other ways of doing. So uh, our work on technology is critical of uh, certain aspects of technology and very uh, enthusiastic about other aspects of uh, technology and um, yeah so this critical approach also needs to be translated in uh, ways of doing and uh, ways of uh, um, assembling uh, one's uh, practice and this is uh, something where let's say it's not a theoretical thing but it's uh, inspired by theory uh, so i mentioned uh, feminism feminism as a uh, theoretical uh, branch is super important for us, um, where also the interconnection with, um, let's say, biology, for example, and uh, uh, other strands of uh, life are uh, coming into uh, play. So uh, practice is definitely on the, uh, let's say, the program of what we research uh, from the inside. And yeah. Um, what you see here in the images that uh, Constant Slideware is producing are some examples which we will not go into, but uh, it gives an idea of the diversity of uh, work that we are involved in. So we do exhibitions, we produce books, um, we have, many of us are coming from a uh, graphic design background, um, but the, the main thing that we organize is what we call work sessions. Um, these are gatherings of artists and people around the arts um, who are scrutinizing a specific aspect, a question uh, which is important. That can be, I mean, this image is a very old image, but it was about wireless technologies, something that we are really interested in uh, for the moment and for the future is uh, to think about um, protocols, technological protocols for connecting, um, but uh, in connection to the question of, let, let's say, how to democratize uh, technology. Uh, so that has been on, uh, <laughs> this is a beautiful image, by the way, <laughs> uh, has been on the program for a long time. Um, yeah. So, and in relation to licenses, uh, what is important for us is also the freedoms that are some yeah, that are connected to uh, uh, free uh, open content licenses. So, the freedom to use, to study, to make, and to uh, reproduce, uh, redistribute uh, work that comes under an open content license have been very important for thinking of. Um, the processes uh, of work, like how do you work as collective in collective processes and how do you share uh, or co-experience and um, dive collectively into uh, producing knowledge and uh, producing art. So, um, just if you're wondering what you're looking at, uh, uh, part of the ongoing experiments is uh, to somehow avoid uh, uh, anything that uh, would uh, uh, represent a final cut. So we're interested in types of presentations that are maybe not finished. Uh, so uh, uh, we're using a, a homebrew script uh, that uh, allows us to launch different uh, softwares. Uh, so we, we're really interested in showing all the mistakes, all the failures, um, uh, but still being able to show you things. Uh, so, and also the different uh, software processes that are running in the background. So not to uh, go full screen, not to um, uh, cut off these edges. Uh, and so this is uh, what we call promiscuous slideware. Uh, there's one uh, caveat in this slide where is uh, that we cannot go back. So, um, uh, right. Um, and uh, uh, if all is well, um, Pixel has um, shared the link uh, to a, uh, a page with the full uh, script uh, that we are currently running. So, 
authors of the future reimagining copyleft. Uh, like Peter has been explaining in introducing Constant, um, the use of free licenses has been important uh, on many in for many aspects. Um, we have been working with these licenses since 99, 2000, and since then all our work has been released under usually free arts licenses. So everything that is produced in the context of Constant. Um, and also we have been uh, tr trying to work with free software uh, as much as we could. Of course, uh, we can never uh, escape the, um, uh, the Gmail uh, addresses that people, for example, uh, bind us into. So for Constant, uh, copyleft has been um, uh, most of all important as a kind of a way to uh, practice and 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 be committed to a collective uh, the collective work from this feminist idea of thinking that authorship is never uh, never starts from a tabula rasa is a webbed practice like really um, uh, deeply. But the last uh, years uh, slowly we have started to see some of the problems uh, with uh, this choice and without wanting to let go of the commitment, uh, we realized that we had to reopen uh, this box. So what you see here, and it's also used as the image for uh, announcing this presentation, is a poster that was made 20 years ago. This was the first time uh, Constant started to discuss publicly uh, about uh, the use of uh, open content licenses. Um, and uh, last year, we organized an event uh, with uh, several guests where we literally reopened uh, the box of uh, copyleft to try and remember why we initially uh, decided to commit to these, um, these practices and how we could maybe uh, understand what we are missing now, uh, what has changed uh, and how to go about it. So this is literally the box of the event copy cult and the original sin or sign between brackets, G between brackets, which uh, we dug up and uh, we reopened um, for the occasion of uh, 20 years uh, after the first use of uh, yeah, the open content licenses in Constant. So one of the things that was important was to remember, um, because like if you see that dusty box, uh, also licenses themselves are somehow um, a, a sort of grey literature that you usually uh, you click OK when you have to have installed something. You don't really want to go into this. It's it's a it's uh, a practice that le that legal scholars love, but what do artists uh, actually have to do with it? Um, and on this event, Authors of the Future, uh, our friend and colleague, uh, Emeric Mansou, uh, reminded, reminded us that this is not a licenses, free, li free art licenses are not just, uh, let's say, documents attached to static uh, objects uh, or art objects. Um, they're uh, very much uh, a political practice. They are uh, somehow, an, and he, he called this an ideological interface, to uh, somehow re-articulate -artic and reframe the way uh, you want your work to exist in the world. And so this political aspect is really important to remember and also to remember how something as dull and uh, um, unexciting as a license can actually be a catalyst of uh, a political process. So, I mean, I think also part of the work was to somehow get re-excited again about licenses, because after 20 years of, of going around with them, we had somehow thought that we had seen uh, all its corners. But when we wanted to uh, think again, like when we wanted to uh, uh, try and deal with the critique that we were slowly building, we also needed to have some excitement about uh, what licenses actually do. So, I refer to some of the problems that we started to see. Uh, part of those problems um, appeared because after 20 years, we also could better see the implications of, 
of using these licenses. And for example, uh, what in the 2000s was absolutely unimaginable, uh, the fact that, that uh, platform capitalists were uh, very eager to support and uh, uh, take, on, take advantage of content in the public domain or under a free license um, is something that we have to somehow come, uh, come to terms with right now. Another thing that is difficult uh, to see is how in our, in our imagination of um, free culture as a, as a feminist practice that would somehow allow us to um, uh, um, understand authorship in a different way, so not as something that is individual, not something that starts with uh, the human, something that is uh, uh, entangled, like really entangled, uh, we realize that the fact that free licenses are bound to traditional copyleft, uh, copyright means that it's always going back to the individual authorship. So actually what we thought would be easy or easier, uh, like the sharing would be maybe uh, easier to do, but it would always go through uh, individual uh, authorship and, co and come back to that. And then the third thing that is something I think that we have somehow started with, uh, we started to see that uh, we needed to work harder to make sure that these, uh, that uh, to make sure that we would, were uh, somehow um, working with these documents as uh, in the in the relation between uh, authorship practice and social practice. So what we start to see is something we also uh, uh, that also is um, reflected in how we, for example, see uh, free software moving right now, or free software that we are in, we are interested interested in. We can see that. It's not just about the license for the object, the digital object. It's also about the kind of framing of uh, a practice. Um, that sounds very ab abstract, but what I'm trying to say is what we started to do first before we actually reopened the box of copyleft was to formulate uh, in constant terms, it's called a collaboration guidelines uh, in other environments this would be mean maybe a, would be maybe a code of conduct uh, a document in which we uh, uh, formulate uh, as clearly as we can how we want to be together and how we want to work together and also where the limits are to what we uh, find access acceptable so last year somehow in uh, in parallel to uh, this uh, work on uh, on authorship licenses, uh, we started writing uh, these collaboration guidelines. And one of the things that was very important for us to understand is that such a document cannot be a static document. So the process that we have uh, committed to, <laughs> again, it's a commitment, uh, is to uh, update these guidelines every half year. Uh, they, the, uh, this updating is connected to uh, the work sessions that Peter just uh, briefly introduced, these half yearly research sessions that we organize. Uh, and so for each new session, for, uh, we will update these, uh, these guidelines and then test and discuss with the group that comes together. Because of course it's also a question of uh, who we are working with and, and it's, it's mm. a situated document it's somehow mm. related to things we actually do yeah so it's community guidelines basically <clears throat> and we can't go back in this script this is a fantastic um, slide where but as Femke said the only bug is that we can only go forward so um, just to say that the two previous images um, so what you see here is an etherpad a collective writing page where the current uh, document that we use as a uh, collaboration guideline is uh, is that, uh, which is already collaboratively, collaboratively written, but it's also open for interventions. So we collect uh, advice and questions on these guidelines on another part. And once every six months, we transfer it into the guidelines. But the two previous images were uh, images of a printout of the short version of these guidelines because they uh, they have there are two versions and a short one as short as possible and a long one, which we don't shy away from uh, where we don't shy away from long text, <laughs> but we made a printout and we printed it on a chalkboard uh, in front of our office, 
so that uh, interventions could also be chalked up uh, on our the facade of our window. And it's important because um, that's it's a big question. Like uh, constant functions more as a hub, I would say, or a connection point. Uh, so we make a connections to between different types of communities. And certainly one of the communities that we are uh, in touch with is the neighborhood that we are in. Um, but that's not necessarily the people who come to uh, events that we organize with professional artists or with curators or uh, which is much more it's kind of um, let's say in-depth meeting but uh, not very accessible. So we try to open the guidelines up to different uh, uh, let's say groups around us um, to scrutinize and, and see if we can come up with uh, yeah, ideas of how to how to proceed with these uh, guidelines. Thank you. Yeah, good <laughs> to say what we were looking at. Um, so I've just highlighted the the part in the uh, collaboration guidelines where you see the direct connection between uh, our uh, work with free culture and uh, the community guidelines. And you can really, uh, it's it's so obvious that. Uh, it's almost difficult to explain, uh, but we we uh, only in the last years we started to see uh, how we how we could maybe do this. So in the collaboration guidelines, obviously there is a reference to the the preferred license we like to use, uh, and then now we have opened up the rewriting of a license. But we will talk about you about that in a pixel of next year. Huh? Ah, okay. <laughs> Uh, that's that's really in process uh, in in progress. Um, right. Yeah. So um, these um, huh, um, writing about community and writing about uh, ways of working together is somehow not channeled uh, fluently to the writing of licenses. And uh, so for the event that we took place last year, uh, we collected a few licenses that were inspiration. And uh, we noticed that they are actually uh, licenses that go much further than describing the use of an object, but they are opening up um, the spectrum of um, the ecology around it, around how the, the, the thinking about the, that what is licensed uh, came about and, and that's much more a political uh, standpoint than um, usually with how we usually think of licenses. And it's also going back to the early history of licenses where um, you could say that you write up something uh, in which the traces of community and the traces of um, the process of um, um, in which something is produced is much more visible than the, the current licenses that we know, which are uh, mostly aimed at, um, uh, let's say, uh, or they're at least formulated on a perspective of um, uh, culture uh, or uh, the, 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 the position of a maker as somebody who has the property rights on a intellectual yeah, thing. So intellectual property rights are already a doubtful uh, phenomenon. <laughs> and just to say, that, yeah. like uh, the licenses that Peter is going to just quickly go through, they they we started to use them as a kind of uh, thinking device. So they're not necessarily uh, licenses mm -hmm. we we would like to copy from or we would like to uh, use, but they just helped us understand uh, the different things at stake mm -hmm. and and to uh, to see the tensions and the paradoxes that are that, that are there in the way free licenses uh, operate. Yeah, and it, it, one of the tensions immediately is that they are all uh, have a difficult relationship with the, let's say, the official open source definition, which uh, excludes licenses that uh, limit reuse in a specific field of endeavor. And many of the licenses that we are now looking at are actually doing exactly this. So, so it also means that uh, what we, um, uh, understand to be open source uh, is uh, in or this way culture, yeah. or free culture is in this way challenged and uh, we need to reopen. So, so yeah, you know. so, so just to clarify, so the, like where free culture, the free culture definition uh, uh, is very clear about not limiting use to, to a certain area and, and somehow we have been also charmed by this idea of not, uh, not trying to define uh, beyond your own uh, uh, a field of influence who can use your 
work for what, we see uh, that somehow we need to uh, think about these, these uh, setting of conditions mm -hmm. in a different way. So we have a few examples that are also available in the exhibition, if I'm not mistaken. Um, normally they should be visible on a computer and there might also be a print out PDF somewhere in the room, I don't know, um, I hope so, I think so. Um, so if you have access to that document, this is exactly the same. So we go through it quickly. Um, one, of, one of the things that we, we like to not forget is that uh, technology is based in um, a, co uh, a colonial uh, uh, history and um, the decolonial media license um, prefers, let's say, uh, people who are uh, um, disprivileged because of that history um, above uh, privileged uh, people who come, yeah. So the decolonial uh, is um, an important uh, aspect in what we are looking at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Then there is the non-white heterosexual male license, which distinguishes, uh, so that's basically a proposition for public domain use for uh, non-white heterosexual males. Um, it also allows use usage for white heterosexual males, but then the conditions are different. So there's a distinction that normally you would not uh, make in, let's say, traditional open source licenses, but uh, this is exactly the point here. Yeah, so where the decolonial uh, media license uh, mainly tries to signal issues with um, uh, with the, uh, the different uh, uh, types of access and the different types of privilege that are around in authorship and, and, uh, uh, and the entitlement that comes with it. Uh, it's, it is more in the, in the, in the preambial and the way it's written. Uh, the non-white heterosexual male license uh, makes that uh, a direct practice by, ex uh, by uh, shifting the rights depending on uh, the uh, privilege of the user. So it's also active, actively trying to rewrite the histories around uh, production. Um, yeah, anyway, we won't go into deeply, but that, that's one of the aspects that's uh, very important to look at. Let's cut it short, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so much to say about this. Uh, this is, this, our question was already, why did we put the French version? But this is the uh, peer production license, uh, which uh, gives uh, people who are in uh, cooperative um, production uh, a right to use uh, the object, but not uh, uh, enterprises who are um, benefiting commercially from uh, collective work. Then Koji Spores is a free fermentation license which was um, which came into existence around uh, a project that we did with Constant with uh, Sarah Maninti. The project is called Wicked Technologies uh, Wild Fermentation and it took place uh, between March and May 2019. Uh, and the idea is to think further than human production. Uh, if we think about art and um, yeah, creation and what authorships uh, exist, we tend to put the human in the center, but Koji Spores is actually um, thinking about the sharing and use of microorganisms and that what is produced by fermentation as creative practice. So what do you do with a description? Uh, who is the right owner uh, in terms of um, creation if we think about uh, something else than, than the human? Then there's the climate strike license which uh, prohibits the use of code by applicants or uh, uh, applications or companies that uh, endorse or benefit from uh, fossil, fossil fuel uh, uh, extraction. So it's a, uh, again, it's a limitation on the use of uh, code, but then uh, based on, on uh, a society, a, a, an image of a vision of society, uh, which in, yeah, if I'm going to yeah. interrupt me, please do. <laughs> No, no, it's just that, that of course, these, these, it's, it's very questionable whether you can actually define uh, what that would mean. Like you could say that any computational uh, mm. process is uh, environmentally problematic. Uh, so it might mean that this, the software produced under this license 
can never be used. Um, you can even ask yourself if software produ production itself would be possible under mm -hmm. the conditions of its own license. But uh, what is really exciting to see is that each of these licenses uh, puts the discussion and the and the thinking back on the map mm -hmm. uh, that we have had somehow lost a bit in uh, a road application of uh, free culture licenses. Ah, there's another one. There's the consumer dilemma uh, license, which um, makes a distinction distinction based on uh, uh, income. Like if you are more capable uh, financially, fin financially wise, how do you say that? Your finances are stronger or um, more than uh, that of uh, somebody else. It makes a distinction based on this. So again, these um, licenses are examples of, of documents in this case. Uh, that uh, open a lot of discussions um, on what does it mean to be an author? Uh, how do you think uh, authorship is embedded in a larger framework? Um, authorship as such is not limited. The, it makes uh, connections to uh, other parts of uh, life which are equally important or even more important. Than, uh, and there is a um, impossibility of separating the two. So if you have to write a license, then it would actually be a good idea to write up these connections. Um, yeah, so we are, uh, well, let's speak for ourselves. Uh, we are not interested in thinking of uh, artistic production as the creation of isolated objects. Uh, we are much more interested in thinking of artistic creation as being entangled with uh, uh, the whole world. No? Um, so, uh, and, it's, uh, and that's, that's also a bit the discussion, like where do you place this license? Because uh, usually they travel, as Femke showed in one of the slides, they travel with a, an object. So the object is uh, distributed, the code is uh, put out there. Um, but that's also a big question mark, like, like should that uh, writing uh, not concern the community itself? And why? what is the distinction between that what you output, that what you are, and the modes of production? Um, so that's an interesting... Uh, um, field where we put a lot of question marks and we're really interested in uh, diving further into it um, in the future. Uh, so one of the things that you could think about which are really problematic um, but also interesting is the field of uh, the appropriation of traditional knowledge like how uh, knowledge that is produced by uh, indigenous cultures um, is connecting to uh, other communities. So what you see here is a set of labels, the traditional uh, that that specify uh, how uh, traditional knowledges can be uh, used or not by uh, other communities. So that there's, for example, one label which is called the TK Women General, the TKWG, which uh, specifies that the type of knowledge that is labeled is traditionally, uh, according to the community where it was produced. Um, uh, uh, held within uh, uh, groups of women only. So that label uh, is basically specifying that, that the knowledge is used for a community of women. So again, like this is uh, not something we would like to develop for Constant, but uh, it really shows also the, the relation between authorship, uh, uh, privilege, uh, identity, uh, and, and, and then how could you somehow do this sensitively and without falling into the trap of, of control and uh, uh, closed boundaries. Yeah. So this is our last example, no? Um, yeah, we have to tune the retune, like we, we go to a different frequency. Um, so one of the things so that, that's basically a large field that we're interested in, and we have different um, projects around it. And we connect to a, a group of cinema makers who is not a group. Uh, they are, um, let's say, a collective instances. Collective. It, it's yeah, it's a reforming and a reformatting and a growing and a changing group of uh, people around uh, cinema uh, who are themselves filmmakers, uh, film lovers, and they um, are really interested in the question of uh, authorship um, because they they tend to um, not endorse copyrights or author rights uh, in its uh, claim of um, 
uh, owning or, or, or in its property claim of images. So the films that they collect and it's uh, so it's the Festival Mondial de Cinema Sauvage took place twice now, uh, once in 2017 in Brussels and one, once in 2019. Uh, and both instances were made by different groups of uh, makers. So it's not a coherent, uh, let's say, uh, organization. It's, it's really a situated, uh, um, yeah, a festival where people and, and places also comes, come together. It's, uh, it's organized in squads. Um, so, yeah. So maybe I can read the, the way they describe themselves and you can see how they make the connection between uh, 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 the, the sort of the aims and the, the des uh, desires of the festival and uh, the way this connects to authorship. So Cinema Sauvage uh, cinemas, uh, is an open place and an open moment crossed by opposing currents. It invites films and approaches that do not bo bother with the notions of property, copyright or authorship. Do not bother, well, they do. Uh, conscious, consciously sometimes via, via free licenses, naively often listening only to their energy. These films show themselves and divert themselves or distribute themselves without constraints searching for their own, working on their media, engaging in collective adventures, questioning themselves politically, they pass from hand to hand. So the way that after a lot of discussion in the first year, um, we have been talking about licenses in a very real way uh, and we came up together um, with the, the idea to try to think about what would it mean to have a um, feral or wild license and would such a thing be possible. Um, so what we did uh, last year, so in 2019, is to organize a uh, get together with many of the, the people in the festival. We were about, uh, so it was a workshop basically in which we tried to do this, so to actively um, sit, think together. Uh, how, what, what would it be like to to uh, to start this? And it was a super interesting moment. We had like thirty-five uh, filmmakers who all have a very different approach uh, on what their practice is like, and they all have a very different idea of um, how they deal with uh, other people's images, but also how they want their own um, products. Well, yeah, their own products is already a very de debatable thing, yes. but yeah. the, the films that they make or the films that they um, yeah, sometimes collage or even uh, steal, uh, uh, how they would put them in the world. So maybe it's good to say like the, the, the two editions that have happened uh, so far, in both cases, uh, all the films that were screened were also available on a hard drive and everyone visiting the, uh, the, the festival was invited to uh, bring uh, a, a hard drive and or like a USB stick and copy all the digital copies of uh, the digital versions mm. of the films. So this was like, it was put in practice. It was not just a, a, mm. like, a, but it meant of course that uh, some questions came up. Mm. Now, it's really interesting because it's, it's it's also a huge work. There are a few hundred films that are all of high quality, uh, basically locally available. Uh, bring your USB stick and you have, that's also the idea to be able to make your own festival out of theirs or to copy it completely or to do something else with it. But uh, yeah, the style of uh, writing. So what you see here is um, basically the write up of uh, ideas as we brainstormed, right? So it's, uh, we put big, big sheets of paper on the table and we brainstormed away. What, what does this all mean? No? Uh, obviously, the, the main question is how does uh, feral and wild, um, how does it let itself be enclosed in a document? And, and does it want to be? And I mean, there is no conclusion because again, everybody has their own opinions, but uh, that, that's a <laughs> tricky thing, let's say. So the thing that we realized late, late, uh, much, uh, much later that what you see here is actually much closer to the way that the ecology around uh, Cinema Sauvage works than any uh, formatted document we could make. 
like it's opinions that come together uh, in a certain situation, but even the next situation, uh, the whole thing will be different. So it's really uh, an, an active uh, writing that is based in the, in the group of people that are uh, at that moment together. Um, yeah, so the, 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 you can see like uh, uh, there's, there's questions of distribution, there's questions of, of let's say, uh, where is the festival, uh, there's questions of uh, wanting to uh, accept the, the copyright uh, regime to begin with, so then already to think of a license is, is absurd. Uh, so there's, there's many paradoxes and contradictions. Uh, in these discussions that are embraced, that are really part of the festival. So it's not at all about solving them. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think it is, uh, we, we enjoy for a few years now the conversations with this group mm -hmm. that is very actively thinking with these contradictions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I forgot about it. Um, so, so okay. Uh, so there is also a question of um, trying to let's not make it too complicated. There has to be a license. Some of the films are put online, so they need a license, but uh, not not all the. And they, I think, they go under some kind of Creative Commons uh, yeah, they variation. Uh, CC zero. Yeah, CC zero. Uh, they are uh, distributed on via PeerTube. Um, but not all films. I mean, if you encounter them online, it's probably only a, a tiny uh, quantity. The idea came, um, but I'm not sure if that's if uh, to make a hallucinating retro license uh, after the last festival, which basically means that um, because there was no license for those films who were locally available, only for the people who had already said yes, you can distribute them online, they had uh, agreed on a license. But um, it would be great, uh, again, uh, a license can also be a place where you read about practice. And uh, so in the discussions with uh, Rebecca and Joachim, uh, who were part of the 2019 uh, team, um, there was this idea arising to, uh, let's, to retro license uh, the films in order to understand what are everybody's ideas and what are the desires and the, the uh, expectations and uh, the fantasies around uh, filmmaking uh, that are present in the group of filmmakers that who take part in the in the festival. So the hallucinating uh, refers to the huge amounts of uh, uh, varieties and, and, and differences and possibilities. And the retro license is a probably legally not very uh, well working license, which is more an, an attempt to uh, describe than to prescribe. Uh, oh yeah, so we did um, a couple of uh, days ago. Days ago, we did an interview with uh, Joachim and Rebecca to um, understand, yeah, to talk about this and also to put some stuff on paper because it's always very f flu. <laughs> <laughs> talk is like very nice, but it doesn't come. So we were thinking like, okay, let's write it up. No, so we're busy making a document out of that something written. So this is a quote. Maybe we can read it um, from that interview that we did. So, uh, this is uh, Joachim uh, speaking. Uh, filmmakers who come to the festival, they have dreams of their ideal situation in which they want their films projected. The desires are very diverse. Like Rebecca mentioned, some want to be present in the projection. So that's a condition then, like I want my film to be shared, but then I want to be present. There are practices around celluloid that demands that films are shown on celluloid. So no digital projection, for example. There are people who are happy their films are shown and who agree that the rights situation is not perfect, but they might be more worried about the context in which their work might appear. So not so much about um, if, but mm -hmm. in what, what context. People might be afraid that a film about an African sculpture, a sculptor or a film about a young girl end up in racist, machist or pedophile context. So yeah, it's sensitive of course, where they, uh, context turned wrong in such a way that it's completely not according to the political views of the cinemat cinematographer. So the hallucinating retro license is taking the idea of modularity from the Creative Commons license. We were thinking to start from the experience of the Cinema Sauvage uh, version 2019 to collect an enormous quantity of desires that come from the practice to create a modular license with many, many details. 
So in a way, like by asking people how, what kind of conditions they want for their films to be distributed under, they were also thinking, uh, they're also trying to think of a license that then becomes a proposition that you can choose from. So it, it, it's a sort of generative modularity. So we started to fantasize, to have fun with it. What if a maker only wants to show the film to the audience of 12 persons, so not 11 and not 13? What I liked is that it starts in the practice and it could ser serve other festivals, be it Sauvage or another festival. We used it like an invitation to reflect and to open up a practice. To reflect upon? Or, well, we need to do some more work on the text. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. uh, that's okay. Uh, it's uh, the, the the transcript is in. Uh, we go from French to English in one go, so uh, we're sometimes uh, <laughs> as Dutch speakers. As Dutch speakers, so uh, <laughs> sometimes a bit, a bit fast. But uh, what is very interesting for us is that um, they are using uh, the uh, maybe even more explicitly than than in Constant's uh, environment. They're using the license not as as solving a problem, but really as an interface, as a as a space mm. to think. Mm. So to end, uh, we wanted to open up to this idea of uh, licenses as transformative interfaces, um, and we would like to do that with a quote from our friend and companion. Uh, from uh, uh, Barcelona, uh, who is trying to uh, think about this, uh, the, the way that these dull documents like licenses or conditions or codes of conduct are actually a, a way to open up possibilities. Um, and so we want to end with that. Mm -hmm. Shall I read that? Yeah. This is how we can maybe understand grey matter or grey literature, a spot from where you can turn the very probable into quite possible. This is where things can be altered. Precisely because this is the place where things can be written down, where things start tracing the two prob probable trajectories of the contemporary structuring of matter and can be somehow partly rewritten and changed from the probable to the possible in an instant. This is at least this, at least, is where the probable and possible blur, they are both there. This is the space-time of transformation. So that's by Gara Rocha. Well, that was it. Thank you very much. Well, well, okay, so the first one is the link to the website of Constant. If you want to know more about Constant, then uh, it's uh, VZW, the, 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 that means uh, association without a uh, commercial I don't know what. <laughs> what is that? Uh, yeah. Aim. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the other one is the link where you find the script for this presentation. So it includes also the text. Um, and yeah. links to things. That and some of the links. Yeah. And it's a great script to use for any presentation. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. Oh, you're welcome. Ah, yes, you can hear me. That's always good. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, again, thank you very much for that. And we've had, uh, looking at the uh, Pixel Fest Twitch account, there's been 15 viewers, and I'm I'm possibly only one of those. I can't be all 15. So if anyone in the in the 15 viewers or more want to have want to ask a question, please just type it in there, and um, I'll relay it to them. Uh, I'm going to turn. Should I turn on my camera? I think I will. I'll yeah, yes, yes. Let's get our faces back. Tell me, we don't see <laughs> Yeah, it's like talking just to like an empty room and hoping that people are there. Um, I'm just yeah. give me a second. It's just loading. Hopefully that's working. Uh, okay, yeah. There we are. So, hi. So, um, <laughs> I, I um, just have a. Um, and it, it, unless anyone else has questions, I just had a couple of my own. Like, um, I, I like what you were talking about with regards to, um, say, code of conduct. So, uh, like in communities that I'm part of, uh, the algorithm community and other tech communities, of course, co uh, code of conducts are a thing that um, a lot of people talk about because it helps describe um, how one should act within a place and what's acceptable and what is not. But um, you know, a, a problem that I've seen with code of conduct is that they are documents that basically are are inactive, and mm -hmm. 
yeah. not enforced. And when I saw um, the licenses that uh, you research, like, you know, the non um, white, male white um, license, etc. Do you, do you think um, having like that almost sounds like a, a condition of a code of conduct rather than a license, but it, do you think maybe the language, using the language of licenses is a way to try and enforce it more or to like, yeah, a, a, as a make it a strong condition of being part of a community to set it out as a law? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, I don't know, like li listening to ourselves and he and seeing these two things next to each other, it's almost surprising how we didn't really think about this before. But it, there's a blurring going on between um, uh, authorship, like thinking with authorship, it's pri privileges, it's conditions and it's implications, on the one hand, and thinking about, uh, let's say, collective work. I mean, duh, <laughs> and, and how you want to describe your community. So you can see that the licenses that we, like without actually making this connection so clearly picked to think with, uh, all make this blurring. They all uh, in their own way are talking about the communities that are either going to make use of it or that, that the work that is being reused can uh, circulate in. So we need to figure out some kind of connection. It's not the same document, mm -hmm. uh, I think. I think right now. I think it's 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 two different things that 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 clearly need to be seen in relation. So when you see the license, it needs to say, hey, but this functions with together with let's let's call it now a code of conduct. Uh, and if you look at a code of conduct, it should say something about uh, the author practice that is being uh, imagined, uh, at least for, for, I mean, we're talking really about a, a pr like a collective uh, practice like Constant. So we're not talking in, the, in, in like for everyone, we're talking about this kind of practice needs a very strong connection between the, the, the way we imagine collectivity and the way we imagine authorship in that and how they link together. Yeah, and there's something else is that obviously um, licenses are written in in uh, are, are, yeah uh, codes of conduct uh, are written for groups of people uh, how, uh, in in order to specify how to behave, but they are not executable. Um, they are not executable as such. It needs something else. You need to activate uh, the community in order to um, get something done. And why we took the cinema sauvage example is. Although there is no writing uh, of the document, <laughs> actually there is a writing, but it's more like an embedding and, an, and, a, and a lift. Um, it's a lift through history that they are doing. They are yeah. telling, it, they are narrating each other. How do we want uh, in this situation to behave? You know, what do we, we expect of each other? Mm -hmm. and, and that's uh, very interesting because it's not producing a document, but what it is producing is a situation that is um, yeah, somehow shared or where everybody uh, has had a, word, a say in how things are done. And so, so somewhere in the, let's say, the making togetherness of um, that situation, there is something uh, very important that is missing in the writing of the documents that specify how to behave and they never work. No? So, <laughs> so that, that, uh, that again, for us, it's really interesting to see examples uh, of um, yeah, attempts to, to write something into uh, existence, to say, look, the way that we um, work together is, uh, is, is a form of writing. It's a choreography, like a social choreography, you know, that needs to, needs to uh, happen. to be activated again and again and again. Yeah, so it's it's something that we've been thinking about, like if a code of conduct specifies how you should behave, then we should really think about the, the conduct of the code. Uh, where do we embed the code in the group? No? And how do we execute it? Um, because that's also a question, like it doesn't automatically do anything. So we need to yeah, yeah. have, a, have a, a kind of an, uh, an activation protocol in order to make it work, right? So yeah, so like, like, and you can see like, uh, uh, since we have started working with these coll uh, collaboration guidelines, they have also been activated quite explicitly mm. in different situations yeah. that then has produced uh, 
uh, changes to the document. Uh, and in a way, when we, like, I think we, we have uh, 20 years of, of, of testing and trying with uh, our imagination uh, about what free culture could do. Uh, now we need to find a way to make the connection to the licenses a bit more active again, because we somehow left it um, uh, in a corner. So it's free art license. Let's not like you know we we didn't yeah. even I mean we did like like now only now we start rereading those those documents very carefully uh, with our current practice and we're realizing like wait a second this is not at all the language we want to speak. Uh, so we have fantasies about what these documents do and then actually not, or our practice has really changed. So yeah, it's, uh, we need to reopen these boxes. So we also need to find, I mean, it's nice, uh, you talk about choreography, like somehow like, or scores or, or see them as, as, as in active, uh, conversation with practice both ways. Yeah. I like that. Uh, yeah. The analogy of scores, because you know, a score is a document, sure, but it's performed, it's, it's acted, yes, exactly. it's, it's exactly. interpreted. Um, there, there is a question uh, from Pixelfest on uh, Twitch, and I'll read it. Um, it's, is there any licensing attached to blockchain? So this is not my area. Um, mm, not, not our area either. No, and actually we're, we're actively looking away from these frameworks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I have no idea um, uh, how to answer this and I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Can't answer. Can't. Okay. <laughs> well, um, it still is interesting, uh, like, that you are looking away from uh, blockchain because I know that, uh, like, of course, we, we could do a whole week long presentation and talk and discussion on blockchain in itself, but I know that, mm -hmm. um, in my limited research on this area, I know that, like, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, tracing the, the an idea, and uh, you know, it's all basically, yeah, a ledger that is publicly available, so you can see where something has gone from here yeah. to there to there. So no, I can understand I, the concept uh, mm -hmm. there to say, like, no, no, for sure. Train. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not, not saying it's not worth attention, but uh, for consent, this is uh, something we have. Uh, decided not to engage with. It's also, you know, you know how it functions now. It's a small world and at the same time we are small organizations. Um, mm. I think what we prefer to do is really set out a focus. Um, so it's definitely something that we are aware of and we know that colleague organizations are doing very good work on this. Uh, but it's not at the center of our attention. So it's just to say that, no, like it's not, uh, yeah. Not the, yeah. And it's certainly not uh, mine either, especially like Again, from what you're talking about, the blockchain seems to be more of a technical solution to this problem. Where yours is like, um, well, yours and I guess yeah, mine too is more of a. I'm going to say societal solution. Like it's it's about the engagement of humans rather than uh, just the technology. It's uh, and is, is what I think. And microbes. And microbes. <laughs> oh, sorry, and microbes. Oh, yeah, the microbes. And oh, algorithms. And sometimes. bugs and features and uh, yeah, bit rot. Uh, all that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In gold. Yeah. In gold. Let's not forget about uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the blood minerals in our computers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yes, it is, it's, it is um, not taking technology as a solution, uh, but we try to really interrogate uh, the technologies that we work with and we are like in the, in the interdependently uh, connected to, no? Um, but we hope that we are not depending on them. <laughs> <laughs> At least, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's on us than uh, yeah. <laughs> that we are on them, no? Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's we it's something that we try to do to 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 develop a critical discourse uh, around uh, the way that we make and and yeah, how this sits in a, in a larger um, scope. Mm. Um, I have a another question because uh, it seems like everyone's seen. Oh, um, I'll get to Pixel's other question. Uh, now, yeah, so I think it's following up from what we've just been talking about. Uh, I'm assuming it's Maita who's uh, saying it, but it's in uh, the way that it can give, co yeah, wait, sorry, let me just read it again. In the way that it can give total control over the how, where, etc., to show, see, expose your work. Uh, again, I'm not sure quite how to interpret it. I'm assuming it's still relating to the blockchain. 
So yeah, I get, I'll read it in total, right? So is there any licensing attached to blockchain uh, in the way that it can give control, total control over the how, where, et cetera, to show, see, expose your work? Ah, uh, okay. So uh, yeah, no, there's clearly uh, fantasies about uh, solving the problems of um, 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 let's say that that uh, copying and, and uh, without crediting etc cetera, etc cetera, through uh, attaching a kind of uh, extreme DRM it's the only way I can, mm -hmm. I can to uh, uh, digital uh, materials and then use blocked blockchain technologies in order to to follow the work through the uh, the networks it's like this would be the opposite of what we are uh, proposing uh, it's absolute for us uh, like the, the way we work and what we make uh, we can and we want and we will stay on this idea that that it, it will we will try to make it available for reuse and we are not we're interested in genealogies but not in control over these genealogies Mm. for several reasons because we're interested in their generative power which means they will go hopefully go beyond what we can imagine so control is like the worst like you don't like we do not and also we have we're when we make something we're not at the beginning of a process we're already part of many processes that are uh, in in motion so to to think about a kind of linear tracking of uh, an author work is the is the, the opposite of uh, the type of world <laughs> and worlding we're we're trying to uh, think about, but also practice and uh, and uh, and discuss with uh, with the people around us. Mm -hmm. So this is like I mean, it starts to is maybe uh, makes yeah like our active looking away from blockchain is it has to do with its uh its tendency to go into these kinds of control solutions and this is not what we're after yeah definitely understandable um yeah because still it's it's, it's it's how it's holding i say holding people accountable that still is like a level of control and yeah you could even go down this sort of like surveillance side of things like having mm -hmm. the other thing right and yeah it's it's um Especially with what you've been talking about, it's it's like at the exact opposite, <laughs> which um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, as a technology, um, I, I've yet to. I'm, I'm still waiting to see how it relates to, uh, I guess, my practice. And I have seen uh, examples of um, this kind of embedding of the history of a file um, mm -hmm. within uh, within the file itself, or like you know mm -hmm. this. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. again, I've, I've yet to but, see how it can take it up. Sorry. I think I think it's also a um, what we really like to do is think about uh, friction as a productive um, phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So where differences come together, somehow the the rubbing of the different opinions. No, we try to perceive that as a point where uh, something uh, um, interesting can be sparked into existence. Yeah. And so even to to think about. Um, let's say, a uh, seamless solution for uh, a genealogy of uh, creation, that would be very uninteresting for us. But, I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, we like to stay with the trouble, no? to quote Donna Haraway, but sometimes the, if there is no trouble, then it's, we really feel it our task to make some trouble. So mm -hmm. we, we feel like we part of our work is, uh, is like professional problem makers. Yeah. Uh, Especially to to problematize, problematize stuff that normally is taken for granted, and that's why the realization of um, rereading uh, licenses that we are very fond of and have been working with uh, for a long time, and you read them again, you realize well actually there we have to make some problems about this even even when they are ours, no, but let's see how they help us uh, get further. So it, it's really like the, the the bringing up of the stuff that we somehow yeah have a tendency to forget about, no? Mm. And so, yeah, I, I totally I totally see that even with the licenses that uh, you referenced as well. Like, yeah, I, I'm in my own sort of thinking. I always I'm thinking about how like yeah, copyright for example it exists, but it's a Western construct. It's it's yeah, yeah, the way it's enforced, and so mm -hmm. you know it's it's. Uh, 
I, it's a, it's a, and it's a thing that we are automatically entered into um, without our consent. Well, I say consent, but like you know, it's you, you make a mark on, on a page and you mm -hmm. you automatically have copyright, and it's like, well, does this copyright cover exactly how I work and how I feel? Yeah. And yeah, so um, so this is why, I like you know, in particular, I liked the, the what the the, uh, the ref the licenses that you're referencing that you're talking about because they at least take it they take into consideration the communities it's not, you know it's not like a everyone's being treated as you are one country and you are all the same <laughs> it's like no you might actually be part of i say small communities communities of tens of thousands of people hundreds of thousands but still mm. who operate under a different way and uh, there's a question um that i had uh about a particular cinema sauvage and uh, the workshop that you did with them, or you know, you showed that towards the end the uh, the diagrams that you're making. I, I thought about how 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 do the like the licenses were being constructed and like the the ways of operating are being constructed with the group that's there. How does it work for other people entering into um, that situation, that group? Um, is it, I guess, like excuse me a uh, remodeled every time uh, is there a general yeah, understanding basically. so yeah okay so, so just to like to to make, in my, in the, just to make it very concrete so what happened is uh, they ask for films mm -hmm. they they basically said on their like when you enter the film it said you should be ready for this film to be available um under a cc0 license and uh on a hard drive um in a very like uh, 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 yeah. um, so these films and some people were okay with that others didn't didn't care um, and then uh, in, when the discussion started to happen they basically wrote an email to all the 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 people that had entered films so that were already functioning in this way asking them okay if we would have asked you before what would have been the conditions you wanted to yeah. distribute your film under? So that's the retro. Uh, and, and what are your fantasies about how you want your work to be shared? So it's a flipping of, of not talking about restrictions, but talking about what practices of sharing and distribution uh, are on your mind. And then collecting all those different options with the idea but I mean, again, like because the next festival, it's not clear if it's going to happen, who will organize it. So it needs to be re uh, negotiated again. It might be that the people that were really busy with this have no time next time. So then like completely different, um, uh, like, uh, I don't know, attention to wildness will be there. Um, so the idea was that the next festival, this list would be available for people to choose from. So it would be a kind of generative but it would be an open list it would be an open list so it's a license that is also open to change at the moment that it's uh... just being <laughs> applied yeah. so it would just grow and grow and grow the option would be like just go like yeah. um, so that's the hallucinating <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next step is probably that we cross out the word license no yeah well, I mean, it's point. nice. I think it's nice to call it a license because yeah, it, 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 yeah, again, like the paradox is become really clear. Interesting. So, mm. yeah. Mm. But it's, it is still, again, like, interesting that it's a license because then that brings all the baggage of laws and like, yes. yeah. and how we uh, you know, operate. So it brings with using that word. But um, yeah. So, okay. I think um, we should wrap it up. Uh, I think we're yeah. about 10 past, well, say 10 past six, it's 10 past seven where you are, uh, different time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for, well, firstly, for everything within my mm -hmm. practice, you've influenced this massively. Well, same here, right? We are like very happy to keep finding you uh, in the <laughs> yes, network. And, <laughs> so, and hopefully uh, again soon in, in person. Uh, yes, yeah, whenever, yeah, whenever yeah. that's possible again. <laughs> yes, um, and yeah, thank you as well to Pixel to Mitre for doing all the technical uh, um, and well organizing the, getting the exhibition happening too. Um, and yeah, so for anyone who else is watching, of course, if you want to be there at the local exhibition, please do go down to Pixel in um, Bergen. They're amazing. They're great. The exhibitions on until excuse me, the uh, 21st of 